Greetings to everyone. I am Ed, and today I'm going to tell you a few stories. But first, a little historical coincidence. In the Catholic Church, the month of November is dedicated to remembering the dead. When I learned about this in my confirmation classes, it felt very familiar. For you see, by pure chance, on the 11th of November 1918, the fighting of the First World War ceased. The 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month was the armistice. While the peace treaties of that war, which was said at the time to end all wars, and sadly did not, would come in 1919 at the Treaty of Versailles, that moment on the 11th of November 1918 was for the British people the moment when the war that had cost them one million military casualties a figure that would not be surpassed in any conflict including the Second World War a generation later. And that war was over. This led to a reflective moment. A two minute silence on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month passed down through many years to remember those who died in the service of the homeland. Around November time, people across Britain will wear a poppy to remember the sacrifice of our armed services. The Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines. All those who did not make it home, and all those who did return with injury, physical, psychological, or both, and all those who served and are serving. After all the sacrifices made by the members of the armed services are immense. To put everything on the line. But now I want to show you something. Now you may be wondering who this person is. I do not know his name. I know he was a barman. I know he lived in France during the First World War. And I know he was sketched and painted by my great grandfather, Henry. Henry drove ammunition wagons in the First World War and he loved to paint. I was told he did the sketches there and added colours when he came home. Henry made it home. Eventually, he was single, so he didn't get priority for demobilisation. William, Henry's brother, did not. He was a stretcher bearer attached to a field hospital and died of the Spanish flu. A generation or so later, my dad's Uncle Bill was a midsection gunner on a Lancaster bomber. He flew missions over Germany. I was told he always insisted that he wasn't an important position on the Lancaster. He survived but perhaps would not have, not least because his unit was planned to be sent to the Pacific in the fight against Japan. This being particularly dangerous since Japan was an island. That meant they wouldn't be able to go over the radar coverage, so they would have to go under, at which point they would be so low that they would be easy to hit from the ground. The Japanese surrender meant these missions didn't happen. In the same war, my mum's grandfather, Frank, was in the artillery. 
He was part of the D-Day landings. Or was planned to be. <laughs> However, during a training exercise, the artillery gun he was training on blew up. Meaning that he was in hospital on the 6th of June 1944. In a different coincidence, both my dad and my mum both had an uncle in the Royal Air Force. My dad's uncle Bill during World War II and my mum's uncle Pete in the 1960s. Uncle Pete was an Air RAF technical officer in Zambia. helping them get their Air Force computer systems to work after they gained independence from Britain in 1964. The main issue being getting their old British equipment and newly purchased Soviet equipment to work together. Hence why the painting of the barman for me has a powerful resonance. Not only does it call to mind those who died in the First World War and along with the Second World War as well as those who died in previous and subsequent wars but also as a reminder that not only were they those who died but also that they lived, loved and were loved as the old poem goes, were people of so many different backgrounds Dad's side were from Ireland and, and Surrey. Mum's side were from Lancashire and that barely scratches the surface of how many people from across the world of many nations, backgrounds and lives all put to one side and in so many cases never returned to at all. Those who did return so often lived and in many cases live with their years of service, their years of sacrifice. I never served myself. So all I can say to all those who served their country, either the country of their birth or as with people such as the Gurkhas, by their choice, those who served in a different country's armed forces, such as the Anzacs, and those who still serve, all I can say is thank you. I've left links to multiple veterans charities in the description. For all our armed service personnel and to everyone watching, it was lovely having you here.